Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin and we are back with Router Week here on the channel and a lot of people were asking what router do I use personally and it's one that I bought twice. It's this one from Asus. This is the AC68U. Uh, kind of sits in the middle of the Asus router product line. This is about a $200 device. Uh, really nicely performing though. It's got a dual core processor, wireless AC with that uh, theoretical connection speed of 1.3 gigabits per second, but it does uh, really perform just as well as some of the other more expensive routers we looked at this week. Uh, you're going to be seeing recorded footage of this because if I unplug it right now, it'll be very unpopular, but uh, you've got four gigabit Ethernet ports on the back, the WAN port, of course, as well as two USB ports that you can plug a hard drive into, a printer into, and use it as a print server. Uh, but another thing that you can do is plug in a wireless uh, you know, 3G or 4G modem and use that as a fallback in case your main internet connection goes down and that's just one of the many little features that this one has that the other routers we've looked at don't and it's really surprising that a lot of the other companies especially that Linksys router we looked at really don't take advantage of the amount of processing power these devices have uh, to add those kind of features that are actually pretty useful so I'm going to step through now uh, some of the you know some of the things in the control panel that I like the best it's not going to cover everything but I'll kind of give you a kind of a glancing overview of all the cool stuff that you can do with this and then we're going to look at some benchmarks both of its wireless performance with my iPad here uh, but also the uh, performance out of the USB 3 port when you have a disk connected. So let's step through some of the features, not all but some. Uh, so you have your main screen here and you've got a nice little, uh, little uh, status screen here that'll give you an idea of how the processors are performing and what kind of load they're under. So uh, right now it's just my wife upstairs watching some Netflix or something and I'm not, not seeing a lot of uh, you know, usage on the processor right now. But even in my office where uh, we have about 170 devices connected to this thing, I rarely see the processors get beyond 50%. So it's really supporting a full-size office. Probably, we've got, a, you know, like I said, 170 devices. We probably have you know, a good 40 or 50 people hitting the internet in some way, shape, or form uh, simultaneously. And it's really keeping up quite well. It's also able to support all the inbound connections we're getting from all of our remote sites too. So it's really just been incredibly robust and certainly more than enough for pretty much most environments beyond like the serious enterprise environments, I would say is probably the, uh, the limit to where this would go. Uh, you do have the uh, traffic management function, so you can turn on this automatic quality of service and just kind of have it uh, you know, do its best guess as to what you want to have perform best on the network under load, but you can also go in and set your own rules. So you can get really granular here. You can set up different, uh, you know, different protocols and what, what, you know, what order of priority you want those things to be in. Uh, you also have some other things too where you can set uh, overall priorities as to what high, you know, highest high, medium, low, and lowest do. So if you're you know, into major league configuration, you can get in here and get really granular and make this thing really work uh, the way you want it to work. The firmware is actually open source. I think they have a GitHub repository. So there are some folks that are making uh, kind of forks of this firmware that you can also install on the device. You also get some really cool traffic monitors here. So you can see you know, where a bulk of your uh, traffic is going out the door. So you can take a look and monitor the WAN port. You can also look at the performance of all the wired ports on the device and see how your wireless devices are performing. They break it out by band as well, which is pretty neat there. Uh, you also have, of course, the USB ports on board and you can begin to configure all the different things that you may want to do on that. Uh, so, of course, you can use the uh, USB 3 or 2 port to share files over your network. It's got an iTunes server on board. It won't work with like the iPhone uh, and the Apple TV, but it will work with Windows and Mac clients running uh, iTunes on uh, those devices. You can also set up an FTP server and have it uh, show up as a shared file uh, server on uh, Windows and the Mac as well, as well as uh, Linux through the Samba protocol. And this is where you would set up that 3G, 4G modem. You can kind of get all your uh, stuff configured there and log in with it. Um, they have a download manager, so you can even uh, have it go out and grab Usenet or BitTorrent and other downloadable files. You can kind of load in there and have the router do your uh, downloading for you legally, of course. Uh, and you can even set it up to uh, be a time machine backup for your Mac. So a lot of what is in here doesn't perform as well as a NAS will. So we've looked at a lot of network attached storage devices on the channel, but uh, it will do many of the features that we've seen uh, in some of the medium and high end uh, NAS devices that we've looked at as well. So it's really, again, pretty robust. You can even uh, set up that drive that's plugged into it as a cloud drive too. So that's pretty cool. Um, some other things that I found of interest here is on the WAN side. So of course, you've got all your uh, internet connection stuff that you would see normally on any device, but you could also set up that dual WAN feature I talked about. So if you turn this on, uh, you can basically say, all right, I want my secondary LAN to be uh, one of my Ethernet ports. You specify which port you want it to be. Uh, you can have it be a failover so that if that main WAN port goes down, it'll you know, 
uh, cut over to the, uh, the local Ethernet port to a different Internet connection. So at my office, we have a Comcast connection, and when that goes down, which happens sometimes, uh, it'll automatically fail over to our local telephone company DSL line. So it's not as fast, but we have uh, really little downtime, and it has a dynamic DNS client built in, so it'll update automatically, and everybody that's coming inbound will automatically switch over to the new IP. Uh, when that WAN port does come back, it switches back and goes back to normal. Again, a $200 router uh, does all of this. You could also set it up for load balancing, too. So if you have a lot of uh, usage on your home network, if you've got a bunch of kids doing you know, a lot of downloading or who knows what, uh, you can have the router actually uh, pass its packets over both uh, providers, which is really pretty cool. So I thought that uh, is just an awesome feature, again, to have on something that is really on the consumer side of the router world. It is pretty uh, helpful there. And of course, you got all the other router features like port forwarding and all that kind of stuff, too. Um, some other things here, it's got a VPN server built in. You've got you know, kind of the low, uh, the low security PPTP version, but you can also uh, switch over to OpenVPN here and uh, set it up to get yourself a certificate and uh, give that certificate and a user account to somebody, and then you can log into your network remotely. And what's cool about this feature is that uh, these modems can talk, these routers can talk to each other. So you could basically set up uh, one router at one location uh, with an OpenVPN client to hit the VPN, OpenVPN server on the other one at the remote location and connect two networks together. So, uh, you, you know, what I do when I'm at work, I can either connect with my uh, own Mac on my desk back to my home network, get access to all of my computers without having to open up any ports beyond uh, just having that open VPN port available. But I could also, if I wanted to, uh, connect my home and work routers together and have one big uh, virtual network set up uh, that would work across the internet, which is pretty cool. And OpenVPN is a lot more secure than PPTP is uh, because you have that certificate in addition to the user account and password. So uh, it does give you some uh, options for that. And again, pretty nice to have this built into the router. Of course, you can you know, set this stuff up on your own, but, but having it uh, on your router makes it a lot more convenient. There's also a ton of logging here as well. So you have a general log, just kind of gives you everything that's going on. You get a wireless log of who's connecting. Uh, you can keep track of who's got what DHCP leases. There's also a you know, really easy way to click on it and see uh, which computer is connected to what uh, and what IP address. So you have the ability to quickly look for uh, those sorts of things. And you can also even see uh, what kind of connections you have at, at any given time. So really, again, a uh, very robust system, something that I haven't really seen on a lot of other uh, consumer routers yet. I haven't looked at Netgear and a few of the other uh, folks out there, so maybe those might have those at their higher end of the market. But uh, I've just continued to be impressed with uh, all of the things that this device can do. All right, we're going to do a quick wireless test now with my iPad Air 2 going back to the router, which is about 20 feet to my left right now. Uh, we're seeing really decent speeds, almost at half a, a gigabit, really. So about 400 to 450 megabits per second. It's about 55 to 50 megabytes per second of uh, transfer speed over the air, which is pretty cool. Now, the farther you get away from it, of course, the slower it's going to get. Uh, but the fact is, is that this performs uh, just as well as that Linksys router we looked at last week that uh, costs $100 more. So I think there's uh, some real advantages here to being very realistic about uh, what you're looking to buy. Now, one thing it doesn't do all that great uh, is file sharing. So we're going to do that test real quick. I have my Mac uh, that's running this test connected via wired gigabit Ethernet back to the router. So we're only getting write speeds of about uh, 15 megabytes per second or so, and then uh, read speeds at about the same speed we saw over the wireless. So there are certainly network attached storage devices that we've looked at from Synology, WD, and others that perform much better at this task of serving files. So I would not consider this router to be a network attached storage device replacement, but if you've got you know, some low volume kind of file needs, it will certainly be able to do that. But I think you might have some trouble doing a lot of media streaming. Uh, certainly if you're writing files back to the shared hard drive frequently, that's going to be uh, an issue as well. And by the way, these speeds are coming off of a solid state disk, so uh, plugged in through the USB 3 port. So we should be seeing uh, better than that if it was uh, capable of serving files at a greater speed. But really it's not uh, designed to be something like that as a file sharing device, but it can do it. So I think, you know, limit it to routing and you're going to be just fine. And I'm really impressed with this device. I think this is a really high performing router. It's very reasonably priced. It does everything that uh, decent sized families can, can really throw at it. And I think unless you're really, you know, in a super high end techie area where you want the absolute best performance, you really want to get in there and have uh, the best gaming experience you can have while still sharing your uh, network connection with other people in the house. Maybe some of those more expensive, more robust routers might do it, but there's just not a lot of stuff out there right now that supports the wireless technologies that are being thrown at us. I think in a year or two that might change, but 
Uh, really, for me, I think if you want the best performance, uh, connect the device with a gigabit Ethernet cable, as we've talked about on some of our other reviews of media devices, and go to town. And this thing certainly has enough processing power uh, to keep up with just about everything your family or your business is going to throw at it. That is why I bought two of them. This is Lon Seidman with the Asus AC68U. Thanks for watching. Thank you.